Hello everyone. Pretty cool video actually. This is a system I started and finished today. So this is what I call interactive nodes. And this can be used for so many things. So let me just quickly take a look um, in the scene view. So if you go in the R key here, you see that we have this interactive no node chest. And this um, component here that you can see is having three different main categories. So we have combat, general, and world. A bit the same, a bit similar. I mean, actually exactly similar as what you have in the editor. So combat, general, and world. So by default, of course, you can imagine that this will regroup the same subcategories. And so what are interactive nodes? These are objects, part of the world. It could be anything. Literally anything you want. It could be a particle effect. It could be a mesh. It could be a cube. It could be even an NPC if you really wanted it to, to be honest. Um, and this will let you trigger a specific action when your player um, interacts with it. So um, I'm going to be presenting in this video the different actions we can uh, trigger as of now. So let's start with effects. So let me set only one. So here we are in the combat category and the effects um, subcategory and you see that you can I mean let's set to zero now it starts with zero obviously uh, but you can set as many as you want you could have 10 different effects applied uh, on use if you wanted to but let's stick with one and in this case we're going to have a heal over time applied to us when we use that okay here you see that there is a field for each effect so uh, if you added a second one you would have a chance for the second effect too this is basically a percent percentage uh, of chance that uh, this effect will be applied to you if you wanted to. If you leave it at zero or assign this to 100, it will of course be 100%. But if it's different than zero or 100, then it's going to be calculated. So let's now quickly uh, go in game. Actually, uh, let me just increase the size a little bit of this chest because I think it's pretty small. It will be fine now. So let's go in game. Go there. So you see already um, earlier yesterday I actually started implementing a cursor manager meaning that now when we hover certain things such as a merchant or a quest giver um, we are um, the cursor is changing right and there is also something that's bothering me um, those two NPCs are facing the wall and that's kind of sad I think so let's turn that all right that's done so let's go to this um, interaction uh, I mean interactive node and use it so to use it of course you just right click and that's it so there are quite a few things that just happened here and I'm going to be explaining so first of all if we select this again you can see that um, on top of the effect the things we have other things we have use count use count basically defines how many times this um, node can be used in the world and this is save and persistent over sessions meaning that if use count was one, you could only use this node one time with your character. This could be useful for some shrines giving you a specific item or a talent point. So for example, if you wanted shrines all over your world, but you can only get them once, you know, to get a talent point, this would be really useful for that. Uh, the cooldown is how often you can use it. So if you see right now I'm using it, now you see that it's empty and three seconds later I can use it again. And uh, below that is the interaction time. So if I set this to five, now you can see that it now takes five seconds to uh, use this um, interactive nodes. Um, going back to the cooldown part, you see that um, when I'm using the chest, so you see right now it's ready to be used and it's full. When I use it after the five seconds, because now I put it back to five seconds, it's now changing appearance. So there is no animation, nothing like that yet. But uh, you see that it's already letting you ch uh, change appearance based on the state of the uh, interactive node. And this is because here you have the ready visuals. So um, if we go there, you see that we have different parts. Here we have the ready model. If I disable that and activate the on cooldown model, you see that this is the part uh, which is disabled. And you just have to drag and drop those things. Uh, you also have the disabled. Uh, visual. The disabled visual will be used when you cannot use this node anymore. So like we just talked about earlier with the use count. If this node was already used, you would have the option to change its visual. So that's pretty much it for the wall um, states and visuals. Let's look at the other um, uh, interaction type. 
So um, another thing is it can give you talent points or tree points. So as you can see right now, if we go to combat trees, let me do something actually. I'm going to open the inspector and stay in uh, good. So if you open the um, talent trees right now or the combat trees, you see that we have five talent points right now. Let me close that, change this from effect to talent points, add one. We will give mage point because that's the only uh, point available right now. And we will give 10 with a 100% uh, chance. And I'm going to be using that and I'm actually going to be switching interaction time to one second because five is way too long. If we now open the um, talent points uh, tree, we have um, 15 talent points now. So we actually got our 10 uh, new talent points. Now let's give ourselves some class experience. So let's give ourselves, I don't know, 40. So we are level one, as you can see here, and the uh, experience bar is empty. And now if I use that, uh, we just got level four with uh, a bit more than half of the experience. So that was it for the combat part. Just a quick reminder, reminder that effects for the first tab is uh, really a lot of things. So if you go here, you see all the effect types. So you could literally deal yourself damage, heal you, heal over time, uh, give you a buff. So like you can have some shrines in the world. It could slip you, it could morph you, it could dispel, teleport, taunt. I mean, it could do, I mean, some effects, of course, are not really making sense to be used there, but it could spawn a pet for you. It could give you all kinds of things. Um, now let's go to the general. So uh, it can give you some resources. Uh, here, all you have to do is uh, add as many elements as you want and um, assign a, a resource, I mean, a loot table. As you can see, always we could have like, you know, five uh, different loot table if we wanted to. In this case, let's just add two because we only have two loot tables created right now. And you see that loot tables also have chances. So you could decide to have only 5% to get this one if you wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to explain how loot tables work. There is a video on that. But now if we go ahead and use that, uh, you see that it spawns this um, um, bag. So I'm going to actually open it again. And if you click on this bag, um, it's opening this loot panel and you can just take those items. And you can just, you know, I mean, in this case, just keep doing that because it's uh, a very short cooldown and it's going to give us a lot of items. But yeah, of course you can define whatever loot tables you want and uh, it will work as uh, just as um, good. The skills one is not really implemented because skills are actually not really far in development in um, RPG Builder. This is what I'm going to be focusing on tomorrow. So not much to show here. Same for skill experience, not much here. And for the world category, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, if you look at there, we have the quest here, meaning those interactive objects, I mean, interactive nodes could give you a quest, one or more quests, basically. Um, so in this case, it's um, giving us the um, quest, which is called get five staff. It's actually more than five staff. It's five staff and eight hammers, but like, let's use it now. Okay, so we use the uh, interactive node and it opens this quest, uh, quest panel now. So we can look at the quest, you can read the description, um, the different objective, you can see the rewards and the rewards you can pick from it. So now we can uh, simply click accept. I'm going to be closing that anyway because we don't have any other interaction type to show. And now um, I can go in my quest journal, you know, you can open that. Now the quest is of course accepted, so it's visible there. We can click on track if we wanted to. I didn't show this in the quest video. So here we have a, a tracking quest uh, thing. So you can just show the quest by, you know, uh, click, clicking on the name. You could stop tracking it, but then you can, of course, you know, track it again if you wanted to. And here it's showing you the two objectives. And now you see that this NPC is showing a exclamation mark, but a bit, you know, transparent because this quest is active here, but um, it's not completed yet. So let's complete it. And I'm going to make sure this NPC is visible. So if you keep looking at this NPC, you will see that his um, icon will automatically change. So I'm going to be getting um, five uh, staffs and then eight hammers because you know that's um, the objective. And now if I click here, you see it went from uh, ongoing quest to completed. 
and if I talk to him, um, I can go ahead and pick, uh, for example, two gold. And now you see we got two gold and the cape, which was an automatic reward. So now we have our cape, and that's great. That's it. That's pretty much all um, for this video. I think it's a pretty cool feature. It's giving you so many options. You can give yourself buff, you can give yourself quests, you can give yourself items. So you can use those for chests, hidden chests. Uh, literally anything you want. Uh, this can be an NPC. This can be anything. Like really, just let your imagination go, and uh, you will be able to come up with some very cool ideas uh, for interactive nodes. And it's very easy to use. Like you can just use whatever model you want. Just duplicate it. Um, set a few settings here. You can even set it as. I mean, save it as a prefab and reuse it as much as you want. So that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna go further. Um, on this video i hope you like this system let me know in the comments and on discord thank you for watching and see you in the next video